Hi, I'm Audrey. I graduated in the year 2020 um, and I did a course in politics and international relations. Prior to joining Bristol, I was in Neon Polytechnic and I did a course in mass communication. I was looking for a very sort of um, international relations mod course and uh, you know, Bristol seemed like a really good, good place to be. I chose Bristol because of its location. Um, it's really, it's really chill. Like I miss Bristol all the time. It's, it's chill. It's fun. It's, um, some of my friends who have come visit has said like, you know, it's like a mini London, without you know all the London tourists, and everything's so easily accessible there. It's pretty much you can just walk. In terms of the content that I learned, it was really interesting. One of my favorite courses in year three, actually, was um, popular culture and world politics. That was really interesting because it is a good marriage between my diploma in mass communication and also um, learning about you know politics, which is my, my major. Um, there's also this course in year one called uh, issues in world politics. That was a great starter for me to sort of, you know, uh, get a good grasp of what actually is happening out there um, in terms of world politics. And it's a really good introductory course for any year ones, I think. So in my second year, I contributed one of my essays to Frontiers. This is um, a publication and that was really fun. Like, it was really nice seeing my own work being published. My dissertation was on Twitter and its and its potential as a tool for information warfare. Um, I, th I chose that topic mainly because you know I hang out on Twitter a lot. Um, it is it is also really interesting because at that point of time, um, Donald Trump was still president, and uh, you know some people have called him the Twitter president. So I thought it was really interesting to delve into that topic and. Um, you know, see how information warfare can play out on social media, particularly on Twitter. In my third year, I put forth my dissertation for the Political Science Association um, undergrad sort of showcase thing. And uh, yeah, I mean, I got accepted. And because of coronavirus, like the coronavirus pandemic, I couldn't go, you know, despite not being able to see it, present it, deliver it, um in person it was also really nice to just see my work published somewhere under something um yeah well a typical day would probably involve me going to classes trying to complete my readings or essays i also consulted my um lecturers a lot the staff in space are really amazing. They will go out of their way to help you. Um, personally, I spent a lot of time going down to London to watch plays because or musicals, actually, because that's what I like. When Hamilton first came into London, um, I remember watching it in the summer of 2019. Um, that was after, you know, all the exams and essays had been submitted. And I went down a few times more over the break. Uh, to watch Hamilton again. I've also watched, um, you know, Dear Evan Hansen down in London when they first came as well. In Bristol, I remember seeing The Lion King, um, Legally Blonde, one of my favorites. In terms of societies that I joined, so I, the only sort of society I joined was the Malaysian Singaporean Student Association. Um, that was where I met most of my friends. MSSA was a really good place for me to unwind to meet new friends and yeah, we're still exchanging letters even up to today, like we're, we're tight. <laughs> I think one of the more memorable things, um, you know, in my time at Bristol was uh, the MS ball. So MSSA holds a ball um, every year and it's really nice to dress up, you know, according to a theme, go to a fancy hotel and just, Hang out, be, hang out with friends. Um, those are those are really nice memories that I have. So while I was in Bristol, um, 
like as a, as a Southeast Asian, right? Like I, I never really expect or know how cold it, it will actually get. So um, I remember there was one year it was really freezing. I think it was my first year. So one of the hobbies that I picked up in Bristol was actually knitting. Um, I've knitted a scarf. Um, I'm currently in the midst of knitting a blanket. Uh, it's really therapeutic, actually. So my favorite food places in Bristol are Eat a Pitta and Pinkman's. Oh, another, another cafe that I miss is uh, Boston Tea Party. Um, there's also Toro. Toro, do, Toro does really good, like, um, mala. I like brisk noodles as well. So those are the two sort of Asian places that I go to whenever I miss home. Um, as for places to chill, there's always the Royal Fort Gardens, you know. It's a lovely place, you know, away from the hustle and bustle, right in the middle of the university. Like Brandon Hill, that's also pretty good. The Downs is always nice, but it's a bit further out. So you might need to take a bus there. I prefer walking there. There's also Clifton Village. Oh, I miss Clifton Village. Last but not least, obviously, you can't go without talking about the, the suspension bridge. So there's a park nearby that you can go to and everyone will have taken a photo at that park. So you can't go without going there at least once. So currently I'm working at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Singapore um, and I'm on the International Organizations Directorate doing climate change and sustainable development. How I got the job was actually through an ad in the MSSA group. And in that in that notification, they said like, oh, MFA is going to conduct interviews in London. So I was like, okay, you know, might as well um, give it a shot. Uh, unfortunately, COVID struck. So um, the interviews were canceled. So I emailed the HR and they said, okay, well, you can sit in on virtual assessment so uh, I did you know at the end of the day I I made it to MFA <laughs> I would say if you have um, passion for international relations you know keeping up with the news keeping up with geopolitical stuff like how do developments say for example brexit or um, you know US elections how does that affect us how does that affect our society then i would say go for it go for go for politics and ir because um you sound like you already have the passion for international relations i think to succeed academically in bristol you you obviously should go speak to your lecturers and everyone's really nice about it they will reply your emails they always never seem to mind you asking them questions because you know the stuff in space they really want you to succeed um I would say the toughest part about moving to a foreign country for the first time, especially, um, would be homesickness. So to combat that, I really encourage you, you know, find friends, find good friends. They might not be from Singapore, they might not be from Malaysia, but having a solid support system of friends is uh, important, especially when you're so far away from family and friends. Bristol is a good place to, to begin with. I think and it's also a really great place for you to meet people in a really chill environment um there's lots of you know art everywhere graffiti um it is really nice i really enjoyed my time in bristol bristol is just chill <laughs>